Hello, and welcome to episode 40 of the Fundraising Bright Spots podcast. My name is Rob Woods, and this is the show for anyone who works in charity fundraising and who wants ideas for how to raise more money, enjoy their job, and make a bigger difference, even and especially during the pandemic. And in today's episode, if you're an individual giving fundraiser, or if this is one of the income streams that you're responsible for, I hope you're going to find today's session really helpful. Because today we're going to look at ideas to maximise the chances that your fundraising efforts will succeed this autumn and winter. This is an interview I conducted in mid-October 2020 with a hugely experienced individual giving expert and trainer named Craig Linton. Craig has worked in fundraising for more than 20 years. He's got an incredibly successful blog called The Fundraising Detective, He's the co-author of an excellent book called Donors for Life. He's a successful consultant, and he's also the lead trainer with me on the Individual Giving Mastery Program that we run at Brightspot. In this conversation, I was especially keen to hear some concrete ideas that Craig feels individual giving fundraisers can be putting into practice right now during this extraordinarily difficult year. And just before we start the interview, I wanted to let you know that at the time of publishing, there are just two places left on the virtual Individual Giving Mastery Programme that we're about to start in November. So if you're curious about how all the masterclasses, the individual coaching and the online training resources fit together to give you that valuable and sustained boost, you can find out more at our Bright Spot website. And if you've still got questions, please do get in touch. Good morning, Craig Linton. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Really well. Thank you ever so much. Are you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, thanks. And uh, just getting ready for the, the half-term madness coming up. So I um, need to get all my work done this week and then uh, into that for the October half-term. Yes, the key theme in our household is uh, what's going to happen at our Halloween party. I Absolutely. Think might not be quite as expensive as my children want it to be. But I need to jump in to uh, some things that charities or fundraisers could be thinking about right now. So it's mid, late October now, and it maybe some of the prep or activities to do with Christmas bills have already happened. But if you were an individual giving officer, individual giving fundraiser for a charity right now, what are some of the things that you think are especially important to think about and some details that you think sometimes don't get done, but which are important? Yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting Christmas for us all. You know, we're in an unprecedented time. We've got COVID still hovering and dominating all our lives we've got then brexit coming up so i think this year even more than ever is is around that authenticity and it's about being open and trustworthy um with our supporters and and acknowledging the situation i think one of the biggest mistakes at, at, at times i've seen this year from from individual givers is sometimes almost burying the head in the sand and not recognizing what's going on in our supporters lives and I think actually when I've worked with a couple of charities recently and we've we've talked about giving people permission to say no and it's okay if your circumstances don't allow people actually responding really well to that um, and appreciating that and then those who haven't necessarily been as affected actually responding more generously to almost make up for those those people who 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 can't give um i don't know if i think you might have been at ifc a couple of years ago with me when amanda palmer spoke and she talked about great relationships are built around this this permission to say no it's okay to say no and you don't feel a bad if you've got a good relationship with someone saying no is not a bad thing um and actually you know, if our supporters need to say no to us this year because of COVID, that's okay. But don't ignore that, you know, still mention it, be authentic, be real, have some empathy for the situation many, many people are in, but also give people who are doing okay, whose health might be good, who saved a bit of money because their holidays have been cancelled and they're not socialising as much and going trips to the theatre or whatever they may do, actually they might actually have a few more pounds available and 
I think nudging people and reminding people of that is, is is no bad thing. So I think that's one of the the first things for all the appeals that I'm certainly involved in is making sure that there's that authentic recognition of of where people could be. Um, and and one client, you know, a bit earlier in the year, you know, they they called all their regular givers, they asked how they were doing, asked about payment holidays. You know, they had a really great response to that. And actually giving from that cohort has, has increased. A number of people gave gifts there and then because they just appreciated being asked, how are you doing? But we've we've looked at it since. And, and, and those people who got those phone calls have, have given to the next appeal and have supported the charity very generously throughout the remainder of the year. And the small pe- number of people who said, you know what, I've, I'm on furlough, I need to tighten my belt. They sent them a, a lovely card to say, you know, sorry about your situation. We put your donation on hold. Whenever you're ready, come back to us. And a couple of people have come back now and, and, and again increased. And it's all because of this being open, honest, authentic. And I think those are, are really important principles. Yes. And I can completely see how that you can get that confidence to ask and see if people can help but also leave them the space to say no if that's appropriate. I can see how that's easier to do, to convey that clearly in a real conversation. Have you got any tips for how clients have been phrasing that within an an email or an appeal letter? Yeah, there's there's a really powerful phrase um, and salespeople use it relentlessly and it, it uh, you know i think uh, roger dooley on his excellent neuroscience blog talks about this this idea of saying real powerful phrases feel free to say no because that gives you almost that permission and that that perceived control to to actually well that's okay i can say no but if you are able etc so i think um that's a powerful phrase that i use time and time again um in emails and um I think the other way is, is to recognise that, look, you know, we know some people are having a hard time. Uh, we know that you may be on furlough or maybe you've lost jobs. If that's you, you know, just send us a message this Christmas or send us a, a message. We'd just love to hear from you and how you're doing. But if your circumstances are OK, then please do consider making a gift as well. And so I think some of the asks are a bit softer this year, I think, than than would be, you know, Christmas, the big game, Giving Tuesday, all those things, typically we tend to go quite hard. And I think it's just softened a little bit and it's been a little bit more empathetic, I think, to to, to how people are, are doing at the minute. So I think talk about it in a genuine way, in a, in a, in a way that, you know, how, how we would explain it to each other. How, how, how would you say to your friends... If we were allowed down the pub, you know, how would you, you know, how are you doing? And you know, hope it's all right. Is there anything I can do to help? I think it's it, it, it's using that that real authentic language is is, is really important. Um, so we've just done a door drop um, for um, a hospital charity um, up in Yorkshire, and again, you know, what we put in the door drop was the chief exec, you know, said, you know, we hope this finds you well. We hope you okay. We've got this this project for this incubator. If you are able to, then please, please do give. And if not, then we understand and, you know, please pass this on to someone else. So, again, try and not make people feel bad or guilty about not being able to give, but giving them a, an alternative they can do to, to do it. And that, that door drop um, is phenomenally well. It's it's already raised um, £50,000. Um, it's it's making a sizable return on investment on acquisition which you know for me is is incredible that you know we're probably going to return one and a half or two to one on the actual acquisition of the door drop which is which is a fantastic result and that comes on i guess to another really general point is don't stop asking um so have that empathy have that understanding of where your supporters are but keep asking and 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 if you've got a need and you you're short of income and you can't do these important things because you've lost income in you know community events don't be afraid to say that and and share you know problem shared and all that and people are, are still responding very generously those who can for some charities are, are having some of their best years ever for individual giving but the key thing is they've continued to ask but and i hear in a lot of people though who charities who have pulled back budgets or they've stopped an appeal and actually that is such a false economy and i guess 
Anyway, the right thing to do is your first point, which is to be understanding that some people are really struggling out there and may, may care deeply about your cause, but now at the moment they can't give. It's the right thing anyway to acknowledge that if you're communicating uh, generously, kindly, authentically to those people. But also the paradox is if you're sure that that's your mindset and you include that message, it makes it easier for you to continue to ask because you know you've included that that clear message that it may not be appropriate for everyone and in yeah. doing so you can confidently keep going and in in so doing you can take advantage of the situation in the country which is some people are struggling deeply financially but others aren't too badly off for interesting reasons and um the worst thing we could do is just pull our whole horns in and not ask at all because in, in case we offend some people who are struggling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's um, re really nicely summed up. And um, I think the other thing, again, that with budgets being cut and being short is, is, is people aren't necessarily doing that feedback piece and that, and that impact, you know, what, what difference has your previous gifts made? Because I've got to find £10,000 in the budget and actually, oh, well, we'll just get rid of that stewardship mailing. Um, which again is really short-sighted you know there's, there's a couple of bits of research that showed you know sending a thank you or sending an impact sort of four to six weeks before your next appeal goes really boosts um, income there's a great experiment from Oxfam in Spain and you know the the, con the the group who got this extra additional thank you sort of a month or so before the next appeal I can't remember the exact figures off the top of my head, um, but it's sort of 20, 30 percent uplift just by sending this this thank you compared to the control group increasing gifts. And Rachel Honeybun told a great story that you and I reference occasionally about you know, taking that time to acknowledge people who've done something extra special this year and go back to them. And, you know, now time's running out a little bit, but in the next two, three weeks, if you can get something out to those top supporters this year, just to recognize how much they've meant to you and how they've got you through this difficult period not only is it a nice lovely thing to do but it will pay dividends when that end of year appeal lands as well no doubt yes so in case anyone listening hasn't heard that example i can't remember if it was episode four or episode five of this podcast but many months ago i interviewed the excellent fundraiser rachel honeybun and the gist of the story is that after an appeal had elicited unusual generosity from many donors she deliberately sat down and wrote a very quick thank you note she and her team did to all of those whose gift had stretched now not just to major donors but it could be someone who normally gives 20 pounds they had given 30 pounds anyone who'd given more generously than normal she did a control group as well half of those who'd been extra generous got a, a, a thank you note acknowledging that extra generosity half the group didn't and what was powerful about the fact that she had the control group is the following year she could look back and see what difference this just a extra handwritten thank you note that took 30 seconds to do but when she looked back those who had received this extra thank you acknowledging the extra generosity when she crunched all the numbers uh, giving had gone up by a 174 percent in the group that had received the extra thank you so if right now the listener works for a charity and some people are not giving but some people are being more generous than normal then a key thing you could be doing in in late october early november is some kind of extra thank you to those who've been more generous this year and according to your experience craig that will pay you back for the effort you put in and i guess what you're saying craig if if we're listening to this in late october early november if we can just hustle a bit and get some kind of extra, even not just that high touch thank you card, but some extra information, which is about you are making a difference rather than an extra ask to do yeah. that now before, a, for instance, a Christmas appeal drops in December. You're saying, according to your experience, that will will cause an uplift in the results in the Christmas appeal that are well worth the effort now yeah ab absolutely and if you haven't got time to to write or or to send a letter or don't have the budget for it you know 
an email can do the job here as well. You know, um, giving Tuesday at the end of November as well is is an opportunity to do that. It's probably a little bit late for your Christmas appeal, but it's a great opportunity and excuse to go out and, and, and thank people. So one of my clients, Doctors of the World, and, and their team this year, we've been putting in some extra thank yous. Um, and we've got basically this mid-value group of supporters and some of them who gave in 2018 some have given 2019 and through the year we've been tracking how much they've given in comparison and they've more than doubled how much they've given this year now some of that's covid so we can't take all the credit for it because it's it, it's very unusual times but this in january we purposely made the decision we're going to spend some extra time we're going to put in some more personal touches to this this high value sort of 100 pound plus group and Last time we checked, income had, had more than doubled by the end of sort of August, and I suspect it's gone even further because they've they've had a couple of appeals in September. So it it, it really is worth doing and spending this time um, where you can. Yes, and if someone's listening and they don't have the budget for that extra mailing or or even much time, <laughs> you're saying if we could just get a a lovely email out, which is not an ask, but which is in some way helps the donor connect to the difference they have made yeah and for instance to make it a bit more likely to be opened and and digested if we were to do anything to liven up that email could we ask our chief exec or but maybe even better someone from the front lines who's been helping the cause right now for them to give a a 90 second thank you or tell a story and a thank you about the, the differences made during the chaotic times is that a tactic we could use include a link in that thank you email yeah absolutely i mean that's again you know one of the things that we we've done with that doctors of the world experiment is trying to get frontline thank yous so the people answering the the phones the doctors in the clinics people in the field in in you know places like Greece and Lebanon and um, around the world is is that authentic voice you know as much as people you think we want to hear from the fundraisers actually they don't it's it's how do you connect them to to the people doing the work and anything like that um, be it like I say a chief exec or um, frontline staff or you know if you if you're not a cause that that has that you know if you're a I don't know and a wildlife trust you know going out and taking some images or doing something around that the environment that you work in or mocking something up from the the animals that you 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 are with can can be really um fantastic and i think the line that i always use and and put in these emails it's because of you and it's because of you we could do this because of you this person you know and it's it's that you language and just showing people what they've done and, and making them you know remind them that it feels good and you know you can feel proud when you give you know remind them of those good feelings those endorphins that the giving gives us and and um you know hopefully make them either put a smile on their face or, or or to to just get them almost reminiscing about what they've helped achieve and do and and what the good in the world that that's happened because of them you know we haven't mentioned telephone yet rob and you know you and I will both testify telephone is such a powerful tool. So even if it's just calling your top 20 donors this month or, you know, your top 30 or get some of the team, if you can get your trustees involved or your chief exec or some service staff. I always love it when people answer the phone. Oh, you, you don't want any money. You're not asking for it. No, we just want to say thank you. We're just looking back. Like you said, we've, we've noticed you've been really generous this year and it's been a tough year. And we just wanted to say, we really appreciate it. And, Tell them a quick story and go and just, you know, use the phone. It, it, it's a really, again, another great tool that we, we have at our disposal. Yes. And I guess a, a barrier might be, well, look, there's 2,000 donors, Craig. You know, I'm yeah. never going to be able to do that. A key thing I sensed you're advising your clients is, you know, just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you shouldn't do something. So if yeah. you just literally start with, can I make six calls this morning? And then, you know, they might go well and you, you get to four of those people. Then you might do 10 tomorrow. And if by the end of the week you've you've made 50 calls and you've got through to 15 people, yeah. 
that is, according to your experience, going to not only affect how the donors feel and then in, in due course financial results because they want to give more when, when they're, they are cared about, but also I've noticed it can do wonders for your own morale and your own sense of momentum as well. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's a feel good. If if we're all stuck at home at the minute and not in the office, you know, having real conversations with support is 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 just feels good as a fundraiser. It reminds you why you do what you do. Um, but yeah, start small. It's like the parable of the starfish. You know, the the old man walking on the beach, and these thousands of starfish are, are, are washed up on the sand, and he, you know, he's just throwing them in one by one, and then this little little boy comes up you know old man why why are you doing that you know you can't possibly serve all these starfish and he he looks at the boy smiles and he says well yeah but it matters to that one i can save that one and and you've got to start somewhere so you might not be able to do everything you might not be able to call all the supporters but the ones you do it matters to them and they'll remember it and they will appreciate it find 30 you know nearly all of us should be able to find just 30 minutes a week to to do either some phone calls or a, some extra car, you know, it's about carving out that time, you know, cancelling one of those meetings and reducing those. Instead of having an hour Zoom call, put it to 45 minutes and use that 15 minutes for phone calls. You know, that's what's going to raise more money in the long term. Um, and it connects you back to your cause, back to your mission. I quite agree, Craig. And as I'm looking at my notes, so far, there's three or four themes I think we've talked about. The importance of, of caring, caring and acknowledging where your supporters are right now and allowing that through in your language as well. But now is not the time to stop asking. If the need is still there, it's our job to make that make our supporters aware of that and see if they would like to invest and help. Um, proactively contacting you through whatever channel to let them know but by impact the difference they're making. And you've given particular time to reference. Uh, telephoning as a way to improve relationships you and i in, in two or three weeks time we're going to start the individual giving mastery program again which we're both very excited about if there's one more tip or tactic or theme that you're looking forward to sharing with that group of fundraisers on there but you might like to just share with the podcast listeners as well what, what's one more thought that you think is important at this yeah. point in the autumn and winter well, I think one of the neglected areas, you know, one of the things we teach on the, the IG course and which participants, you know, really say helps them is, is the respond model. So one of the things in the response model is around the response form. And that's often overlooked. We we concentrate on the copy and polishing that and, and you know, getting the photos right and everything and actually making it easy to give and thinking about what we're asking for is, is really important. So I suspect this year more than ever, we need to maybe get away from just that standard ask string of last gift, one and a half times last gift or double or triple your last gift and then other. Is think how can you package things up? So, you know, this idea of set completion of, for example, crisis, do it brilliantly at Christmas. You can either buy one meal for a homeless uh, person or you can buy the whole table of 10. And people, what do people do? Well, let's go for that and and you know as a stretch gift uh one charity i'm working for one of the things they do is to buy beds for for children who don't have beds at home in the uk or need a new bed or for, for a variety of reasons and how we package them you can buy the mattress the covers or the whole bed so you've got you know 10 quid for the pillows 20 quid for the duvet or 100 pound for the bed or 130 gets the lot and people like buying the whole thing that buy the whole set so you can start thinking about doing that and i think the other thing this year as well is around this idea of rather than just put other you know you could maybe find some language that's appropriate you know surprises with a, an extra special gift this christmas or you know help give a little bit more to to, to make up for those who can't give and you know try and get creative with that other thing rather than just use the, the standard because again i think people if you get them at the right time they may be able to and be willing to give that little bit extra the response form is often the thing we think about last but what i would encourage people to do is is think creatively about how you can build stronger offers and really clear concrete asks for for people this this year 
Yeah, that's excellent advice. It's uh, it might feel a bit trickier and or oh well, I'm sure it'll be fine. But actually, according to your research, extra effort in this area, even though it might require a tiny bit more effort, extra effort in this area pays dividends in terms of what the, what the donor who does care ends up plumping for. Yeah, and what what typically happens, the response rate isn't affected, but average gift goes up um, when you when people get the opportunity to for you to to package up um the other thing you know that that crisis example you know shopping list sometimes we ask people to say you can buy you could buy what shop could do you could buy a meal for the this amount or you could buy the christmas decorations for this amount or you could buy some counseling for this amount and actually what they find is rather than having three very different things on your shopping list you're better off asking for by one meal, 10 meals, 100 meals, or variants of. So ask, ask for multiples of the same thing rather than a disparate mix of different things. And again, people um, can process that a bit easier, I think. And so they 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 think, oh, I'll, buy, I'll have five of them or 10 of them rather than... It's very hard to compare counselling versus decorating versus a meal, whereas, okay, I can do three of them or I can do 10 of them or 12, whatever it is can, can work better. Yeah, that's a really helpful distinction. I'd never thought of it that way, but so uh, I completely can see how that would in practice have an effect. Uh, and in terms of time now, I need to, to wrap up very soon, but Craig Linton, thank you ever so much for joining us on the podcast. I really appreciated your ideas and advice and I look forward to catching up with you very soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rob. Take care. So there you go. I hope you found Craig's ideas, tips and examples were helpful. You can find a summary of the key ideas we discussed in the episode notes on the blog and podcast section of my website, which is brightspotfundraising.co.uk. And as I say, if you'd like to go deeper into these and dozens more strategies to solve the challenges of individual giving this year, Craig and I would love to help you through the Individual Giving Mastery Programme, which starts in November. At the time of publishing this, there are just two places left. So if you're curious about how this programme grows your confidence, your skills and your results, do head over to brightspotfundraising.co.uk forward slash services and then scroll down to find out all about the Individual Giving Mastery Programme. And if you found my discussion with Craig helpful, I would so appreciate it if you could take a moment to share it on with other fundraisers that you know, so that we can get these ideas out to as many charities as possible during this difficult year. And if you want to get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. Craig and I are both on LinkedIn, and on Twitter, Craig is at FRDetective, and I'm at Woods underscore Rob. Lastly, thank you so much for listening today. And until the next time, Good luck with all your efforts to make a positive difference.